<laughs> okay, so I just cleared in uh, with uh, customs, and who should I run into but the man and legend himself, is Sven I Irvin? Is that Irvin. U Urin. Okay. Ish, ish, ish. I'm gonna get it. We're yeah, gonna hang yeah, out. We're gonna sure. become friends. So this guy is a legend. I've been following his blog for probably 10 years. But at least from what I've seen, is he makes these little boats. I mean, he's been sailing for forever. He's gone around with Cape Horn and yeah. just epic, epic passages, big blue water ocean stuff. And these these tiny little micro cruisers that he designs and builds himself. That's right. Yeah. 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 So yeah. how was the trip coming here in, in this boat? Uh, from Porto Santo. Mm -hmm. And it was uh, kind of good. Uh, first, uh, I got good easterly winds, mm -hmm. and then it was like halfway here, you know. Yeah. Wind died out oh, for one right. or two days. Uh -huh. I don't mind. I don't mind. I like it, you know. Yeah. But then it came up from the west, and then I went north, you know, so it was good. Mm. The only problem is, you see, we turn a little bit around, and you see that mountain there, Mount Gia? Yeah. You see, I got the center board here. Right. And coming in here, I got the wind with me. You see, I've got no self steering on the boat. It just balanced the boat. Yeah. No autopilot, no nothing. Really, that's incredible. Okay. That, so, I so, you know, tacking into the harbor. I'm but you need stuck. to have that down. But I have to go under here and come up in this side. Mm -hmm. And I do that. And behind the mountain, you know, suddenly they came. Uh, Catamatic wind, wind down yeah, slope. Two, three times stronger than other ones, you oh, know? Man, yeah. And it kind of blew me towards the breakers. Oh no. And there was like a tight rip there going up like that. Uh huh. And I would have this oar, you know, and I've got no engine. Yeah, yeah, just the, the skull so oar. I, I tried to get out the oar, you know, but the boat was rocking on that, so. I'm, and it was pretty close, you know, and it was just like for me a bit like well to the castle, you know? Uh huh. But somehow I managed to get the With the oar you, you got yeah. through the, the breakers so and... I'm not really strong anymore, you know, <laughs> because I'm 82, you know, uh -huh. and every year, you know, you get weaker and weaker and weaker. Uh -huh. But anyway, you see, so I got in here, you know, in, uh -huh. in good shape, you know. So Sven has offered to show us around some of the stuff he's, uh, he's built on this boat. So we've got these uh, kind of pad eyes he's built out of a uh, rope with epoxy. Yeah. Really cheap and easy and super strong. Yes. You can see there's more, you know, and that's another it's one. Easy. All over the place right here. Yeah. Right there. And it's doesn't it's not heavy. Uh-huh. So <laughs> this is how it is. So smart. And flag pole, one tiller, and then a tiller inside too. One of the things I really like that you do is you just have a you know, place for everything. And a small boat like this, if you're really creative, you know, with uh, yeah, you having see. storage for stuff, you can you can fit a lot of things. You can fit everything you really need. Yeah, uh -huh. like this, and you just put it up like that. Mm -hmm. It's there when you need to find it. So let's see what we need. Here is tools, you know. Oh, God, okay, yeah. Here's for sales, you know, like uh, palm. Mm -hmm. For repair. Like a... I got a very good palm, you know, very expensive. This one. Oh, nice. Really? Uh-huh. It's kind of fit, molded to your hand. And... and in the beginning, it's difficult, you know, but mm -hmm. you, you put shape. it in water mm -hmm. and, and uh, work with it on the water. Yeah. But make it wet, completely uh -huh. wet, you know, and, and then uh, it takes the shape, you know. Very good. So here I've got a few. Oh yeah, there's the tools drivers, and stuff, you know? yeah. You've got everything sized just right to fit your yeah, water bottle so it doesn't you know, it doesn't slide around and no, everything okay, is stays nice and, and tight. And then, and then. What, so when you're sailing this kind of boat in rough weather, I mean, you've got it so well, you know, everything secured and built. Does it, my boat, I guess, when I sail in, in rough weather, it just creaks, moans, and contorts. Is yours no, no, every silent? Quite, quite, that must be so nice. Always, and you say it's so stiff. Mm -hmm. It's four centimeter foam. Wow. Foam in the cell. 
Yeah, yeah. In the bottom here is That's like up on the deck is three mm. centimeter mm -hmm. and it's so carbon fiber on it. And it's like this one stiffening it up too, you know, longitudinal. Mm -hmm. And you see the carbon fiber here. And here's the glass fiber because right. you know with a iPad mm -hmm. I get the signal, you know, right through the roof. Oh yeah, smart, yeah. So if I did that in carbon it would have no signal you know? for all your, your gadgets. So here is what is this? This is you know, cut my oh, hair, your beard, yeah. you know, and nails and mm -hmm. the toiletry bag for my body, mm -hmm. you know. Electricity, you know. Uh -huh. And this keeps going and going. Tape, different kind of tape. Mm-hmm. Ah, this is the tool. Ah, uh, yeah. There's not too many, you know. Mm -hmm. but, but this, if you figured out what you need by now, yeah, it, it, you don't have to bring an excess. Still a little hammer, you know. Uh huh. If I had a hammer, there's a song like that, you know. <laughs> I would hammer day and night, you know. And, have you heard that song? I don't. I don't know if I know that one. There's a. Yeah, Another one, another you know. Oh, well, 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 Nice little wrench. This is a really good thing, you know. Mm -hmm. Oh, just a few things, you know. And then the insulation must be great with this yeah, this foam, yeah, right? So good, you know. Yeah. And you feel so safe in this boat, you know. Mm -hmm. Nothing can happen. Like this one's Oh well, I don't know. So this one, you go, you do the a one rope, and then you go another rope around and, there, and, and you then paint that, it. Yeah, one with... rope around them to make it a bit thicker, you know. Yeah. You see, this is a smaller rope going around it. Yeah, yeah. But that is really, really strong. And you see on that one, that's also a bit uh -huh. smaller one. And you can make it to whatever shape shape you want. Yeah. I'm going to steal that for, for my whisker pole um. And you chocks. see if you want it, I got it on my website. Mm -hmm. And you see, if you make one going up like this, mm -hmm. going down there, and then you can come also, and then you can bend them together. Oh, okay. And then wind and like that. You get the and then they got shapes. four feet, you see? Yeah. And then they're strong in all directions. So, so I highly recommend um, you check out uh, Irvin's uh, his blog because he has lots of cool uh, tricks he's, he's come up with over the years. Yeah. And uh, if you get something out of it, maybe uh, give send him a donation. He's got a PayPal link and uh, he's going to use that to build his uh, his next his next boat. And yeah, that's I'd be grateful for you know. <laughs> and there'll be more and more, you know, knowledge and tricks for us all to learn from because I've I've definitely gained a lot from following along and looking at his techniques. There there's sometimes they're out of out of the box, you know, like not the the same things every everyone's using. And it's very very good for the budget budget minded. Yeah, exactly. I think. And also for convenience, you know. Mm -hmm. You get things like this little one here it fits here. And it's another one for my safety belt. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I just drill a hole here and put it in, and it's so strong, you know. It's one here too, on other side. Yeah. And like once you figure out that these, you know, do this a few times and you can get it figured out, you can build things pretty quickly because you built this boat in yeah, very yeah. little time. Like yeah. So I came home, and maybe it was in August, mm -hmm. and I was test sailing it the next year, you know. Mm -hmm. And I'd say this is. I mean, the, the way you describe it and just like looking at it, this is more seaworthy than a lot of these like million dollar monster. Everyone, it's more yeah. to, every, every, every boat, it's just because it's so small. It's like, it's like, yeah, yeah, it's, it's like, it's like a shell, you know, like, yeah, it, and, and can, everything is, and it's waterproof. You see the hatches, mm -hmm. they, they tie down. You see, pull on that rope. Oh, yeah, oh, you're tied on. You see the gasket in there? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's. And you, you put it. Close it all the way. And now you see the closing thing, you know. Uh huh. Close that so it screws down with four four of these things. Yeah. So you you got a, a home built. There we go. Hatch. 
Yeah. Which is probably more watertight than what you would pay a thousand dollars for yeah, like see, that's the tool. from Lumar. Oh, this one here. This yeah. Is the socket. Oh, gotcha. So you got you got your tool here, and you can really, really socket that down. It's just and we've been testing this boat upside down, you know. Yeah, yeah. You should check out. He's got a video of him rolling it while you're inside of it, right? Yeah. Did you have the seatbelt on for that, <laughs> or are you on the ceiling? <laughs> that was very cool. And and then I guess there's this maybe this area needs a little bit of refinement. You said, but from yeah. from my view, it looks it seems like a great start because you've got um, you've got your uh, your kind of wet area right here, right yeah, when you're going in out of the hatch, and then a dry area in the middle. I I'm gonna show you. I can show you. A Drawing the next book. Oh yeah, let's look at the drawing. I, remember. I select one. You know. I we might as well take this one. This is from yep. 17 of you. Mm -hmm. So you can and see. This, this is the double ender. Yeah. And this is the. Here is the bulkheads. One here mm -hmm. and one here. Right. Waterproof, you know. Yeah. And here is going to be a little like a dining room. Mm -hmm. Or a real small one. Here's going to be the bed, and here back is good. Here's a hatch, mm -hmm. and you can work that most from that hatch, and you can close it. Gotcha. Yeah. Really exactly, and the same in the front, and here you have also a little deck house. Ah. Uh -huh. You can see, and in good weather, you got a little hatch you can open here. Mm -hmm. And here you can sit on a seat facing that way. So this and one's going to have three hatches. Yeah. And the deck house. That's that. So. Yeah. One hat here mm -hmm. and one hat here, and this is only to open in good weather mm -hmm. when you're in port, you know. Yeah, when you see a pretty girl walking by the dock, you know, right? Right, just open and even you know, with your long voyages, you end up inevitably spending some time in port. So, you'll yes, have a nice yes, little yes. room in here where you can sit in here yes, with you see, uh, like now we are already here uh -huh. more than one week, you know. <laughs> and it's kind of interesting to be in port and meeting people, and yeah, that's one that's part of cruising, you know. So, this is what. That's that's the part that's going to be added to the next boat, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, and but you keeping this this, this forward center board. Yeah. And before I was thinking a bit about uh, chain runners. Yeah. Vertical chain runners with ballast and protect the bottom. Mm -hmm. Like the paradox. But now you see. Oh, well, maybe I can take use this one. You see, now this skeg and rudder combination mm -hmm. is going to be really really strong, you know. Mm. And. When the boat is sits on land, so... Oh, it'll be kind of nose down a little bit on the bottom. Yeah, so here it's going to be strong. Here I can mm -hmm. make some, you know, metal in the bottom. Mm -hmm. But all this bottom is going to be above the ground. Ah, oh, right, so you can get under it yeah, and, and scrape it, and, and paint also it. also if you go on an oyster bed or, you know... Something oh, it doesn't, like yeah, it doesn't scrape it up. and That keeps it 40 centimeter, you know, it's like this much above the ground. Uh-huh. So that's the idea. Yeah, clever. Yeah. And here's the sail. You know? And so these are the, the lug sail. We should go outside and have you talk a little yeah, bit about that again. I think that's a know. really neat idea. Yeah, that, uh, they, they, they're really the best sail, you know. But, you know. Well, how many boats have you had with the lug sail? Is this the first one or the other one? Oh, this is the second one. Second one, know? yeah. Yeah, it had split sail a lot, you uh -huh. know. But this is really much better, you know. And it's a short mast, you know. Mm -hmm. And the mast is, you know, like two and a half kilos. It's like five pound yeah you can take it off yeah and you see mm -hmm. i don't know if you notice but it's three holes for the mast right and uh, so i got a bit of lee helm on this boat mm -hmm. so i thought maybe i move the mast back a bit but then when i went where, where down in porto santa so well maybe that's not a good idea you know mm. so i just took the mast up with the sail mm -hmm. and everything i moved it over for two yeah. minutes, you know. Uh -huh. It's a possibility, you know. Mm -hmm. When you did your trip down to Madeira, the, the, the long one, it was like 70 days, did you bring it, uh, did you carry all the water that you need or did you catch yeah, some water? It was 78 days. 78 Norway. days. Wow, yeah. And uh, all is turned up in Norway. Maybe it's got to turn the chart here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was a... Right. That's where you start in Norway. Uh, yeah, it's up here, you know. Mm -hmm. And this boat's super easy just to put on a trailer. Yeah. I bet, yeah. And it sail, you know, towards Iceland. Uh -huh. Here and down. West of Ireland. That means I came outside the Bay of Biscay. Right. With all the traffic. Staying and away from the traffic. Also, you know, for um, 
if I got a storm here, mm -hmm. I had a lot of sea room, you know, mm -hmm. and then I kind of hit the ice source here, you know. And How does it do on different points of sail? Like, does it like to go up uh, one better or down one better? Wind, you best downwind, yeah. Next boat. What boat is be it? Better, you know. Yeah. Have you seen this pilot chart? Um, yeah, a friend of mine uh, loaned me some pilot charts. And this is the British one. Uh huh. They are kind of nowadays they are kind of better because I don't know what's happening in America, but they don't seem to update them or or, no. or anyway. You know, so, yeah. yeah. yeah writing table. Yeah, that's great. You yeah. built that yourself, or is you? Yeah, I just made it. And uh -huh. I took that there, and I got. Uh -huh. And it's two of these pens if one should break, mm -hmm. and I even have an extra one here, you know. Yeah. So and it's not all flying around like like on my boat. <laughs> yeah. And then and then he's got some flexible solar panels mounted on top there. Yeah, and, and that's the and they come in here, you know. And he, you were saying that to seal these up, you just flip the boat over and you pour yeah, epoxy exactly. in there. <laughs> that's cool. so nice, you know, with the small boats and the workshops, you know. Yeah. And if you then working on inside laminating the deck up here. Mm -hmm upside down you know or, or this oh yeah here. Mm -hmm. and also on the side you know like this one i turn it on 90 degrees you know and working on that yeah doing fiberglass upside down is it's not so fun is it no. um, and then of course these are the the cell the, the the lines that go to your um steering. your steering yeah so you can steer from in here yeah while you're sleeping and then they go back all the way back to the, the tiller. So underneath his rain jacket, there we go. So this is the internal tiller, and it's sealed up with bellows, which is mostly watertight. And he's got a little seat here for for you know, sticking his head out. And and then here, I guess, is where you have your food. A lot of it stored. Let's go. Let's go look at the the, the sail again. Yeah. And this this hatch, which is. You do the gasket on the uh, the boat side. Is that what you're saying? And he's got the sculling oar. I've seen a few people with this. Sounds like a pretty effective way of moving a small and even even kind of larger boats too. The solar panels up top. This is my navigation light. Ah, right there. And then his his swim platform that looks very sturdy. Yeah. And you've even got a step down in the water. Yeah. A little grip. Well, is that like maybe bronze or copper? And here is you see that little hole there on the edge? I do. Yeah. What is that? That's you see if water comes into here. Mm -hmm. The ventilation system. It's like this S thing in, in the kitchen. Yeah. When you in the sink. Mm -hmm. Pour out water. And then the excess water for some is like a drainer box. Aha. And then the excess out there uh -huh. but it looks no air can come out there yeah it's like a super durade box yeah exactly. yeah and then it goes down and up on the other side so yeah, very cool the sailing rig you have on here is quite interesting uh could you can you explain what it is yeah this is the lug sail and the good thing with the lug sail is that she got no goose neck no hardware, it's just this halyard, you know, holding it up. Just this little six millimeter quarter inch rope. It's simple. And also if you want to adjust it a bit, you know. Yeah, what, what type of adjustments can you do with this type of sail? Move this more forward. Okay. Like that. Um, go downwind, for example. That is more, it's nearly like a square shape, yeah? Yeah. And it seems a bit more balanced than a... Uh... It's like very balanced, you know, so, because now you've got forces on each side, so the force on the sheet is just, you can pull it in with two fingers, you know? Mm-hmm. No problem. And the jive, when it comes over, yeah. a little bit deep because that breaks. Ah, okay. So it doesn't come so fast. Yeah. Took the handy sail, you know. And and this type of sail works good for self-steering downwind. 
Yeah. I'll slow you say. Make sure you lift it closer from the river. That's one of the things I always have had trouble with uh, having too much weather helm because yeah. the sail sticks out so far on one side going downwind. I a lot of times have to take the my mainsail down to make the wind vane work. But a sail like this where you can you know have it on both sides of the boat you see? ought to help that I think. You don't need any rang or kick on this because you see if you try to lift the boom up, mm -hmm. this stops it from lifting. Aha. So it's just like a piece of a metal, you know? Because it's a slow boat, no water comes up on deck. It doesn't bang into the waves. It's like walking in a forest in a nice day. After a while you get that adapted to that speed, you know, and you always get adapted to speed. You know? This is good now. Always easy to get open. Do like that. I'll do for that to just go like that. Cool. And so you, your next boat, you think you'll have the same rig, but with side-by-side -side mast, and you're able to lift it up out of your way. And these, most of your spars are made out of carbon fiber, except for but this one is glass fiber because he has his AIS antenna going through there. And it's so good, you know, and I got the dipole mm -hmm. antenna, and it picks up boats so far away, you know. How far have you seen boats with that? About 100 miles. 100 miles, wow. Oh, yeah. yeah, mine I get maybe 30 at best. Yeah, yeah maybe 30, you know, but, you know, exceptional cases, you know. Uh -huh. Every once in a while. Very cool. I wish I wish more small boats had had uh, bow cleats like like that. <laughs> big big strong ones that you could get a, a decent sized rope around. But the next one is gonna be fixed on. Okay, you're gonna do that same method as your handles? I, I, I can show you there are handles. Right. They're also for tying down the sails. You know, I can put this bundle on the boat. Ah, you can take it down there and it won't, won't fall in the water, but otherwise everything falls in the water. Mm -hmm. Maybe we can go in the shade, you know? Yep, let's go. Yeah. yeah, no problem. The spin was nice enough to help me move my boat from anchor to the slip and we're just going to go down at the end of this row here that's where we'll be so here's our new spot we just beat the wind it's really howling out there all right so uh, Sven has decided to take off to Ireland where, where are you headed yeah I can sail in Ireland you know I was sitting on this in there watching Sam crossing and then I saw this wind, and I thought, why, why, why not use it, you know? Uh -huh. Because my plan was to put it in a container. Yeah. Then I thought, well, I don't have that much money, you know, and to Thailand, and I get uh, what, what is called a head on Sam, he's going to give me <laughs> three weeks or yep. what? Uh, yeah, probably about, maybe a little less than three weeks, I'll head up there, maybe I'll meet you up there. Yeah, maybe we arrive at the same time, you know? All right, we got some help. We're underway. Around the corner. Very good. I'm on the XLX. Imagine being a boat this small for a month at a time. Pretty something. Oh, wow. Legend, though, for 
sure. It was quite an honor to get to meet one of my sailing heroes, uh, Sven there. I'm really happy to have gotten to feature him on my, my YouTube channel. Back probably maybe 10 years ago, I first learned of him when I had bought my first uh, sailboat back in California. It was a little 22 foot swing keel and I was just kind of curious what kind of trips were possible when a boat that small. And when I stumbled across his blog, it was really inspiring just reading about how he had, you know, built these boats himself and sailed them, you know, boats as small as 15 feet across the Atlantic and taking boats around, little boats around Cape Horn, high latitudes, Southern Ocean sailing. Uh, it, it just kind of opened my mind to the possibilities of things you could do on a small boat. And it, it pushed me to do a little more than I definitely would have otherwise. Like I, you know, put, sailing my boat, just going past Catalina out of the Channel Islands, eventually even sailing to Hawaii. I think he was a big inspiration there. Well, what's also really neat is how he's done it all on reasonable budgets. And uh, it, he's keen to spend time with him over the last few days and learn about his design and philosophy and decision making. Uh, it just really, really becomes apparent how much, you know, work and thought and design iteration has come about to make these small boats so functional and seaworthy for him. So I hope you guys enjoyed. I'll put a link in uh, the description of his blog. It's, I'm really eager to see what his next boat, you know, comes out like. But I'll see you guys next time.